today I decided to mix up the order of exercises, uh, mix up a, a few things. And uh, that led me to get another uh, little PR on the front squat. So I got 175 today, and I think that's purely as a result of doing front squats first. Uh, in the past, I don't know how long, I've always started off with a deadlift or some sort of pull uh, on these you know, sessions where I'm able to go to the gym, where I'm able to actually push hard the weights. I usually start off with some sort of pull, and then I get into a squatting motion. Today, I decided to start off with the front squat to see you know, what, I, what, what was possible, even though I'm not kind of rested at all like yesterday. I did like eight sets of uh, 30 uh, Hindu squats. I did a whole bunch of five by five uh, front squats with 100 kilos. So I did a lot of work yesterday. I was pretty tired by the time I got to the bed, uh, got to sleep uh, yesterday. But today I kind of woke up and I felt all right. Uh, I don't know what it is about these high repetitions, man. I, instead of waking up the following morning feeling absolutely trashed, I feel really good. Uh, in comparison to five by five at 80 percent squats, it's a day and night, man. Like high repetitions always kind of have me feeling better. Everything feels better. The body basically responds. There's a feedback that I get from the body after these high reps that is always positive. It's always good, man. It's never, you know, that weird soreness of joints and muscles and everything's kind of in pain when you're working with 80% or 75%. It's not like that. These high repetitions, body weight damn squats, man, are feeling better than... It's, it's, it's crazy. So today, because of all of that, I decided to push the front squat. I decided to mix it all up, do front squats first, and I was able to get 175 on the front squat. Looking at that rep, um, not basically the, the happiest chappy when it comes to the, the rep. I collapsed my, my uh, 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 thoracic spine, collapsed on me, and because of that, all the weight basically shifted you know, onto my hands, as you would expect. It was a hell of a fight. And one thing that I can still can't work out what the hell happened was both of my biceps. Now, I, I still don't understand what the hell happened there. Both of my biceps cramped up as though I was doing a one rep max cheat barbell curl. It was just, I've never felt anything like that because of all the fighting that I was doing with the bar to kind of drastically extend I don't know what happened, man. Maybe it's that irradiation effect where all the neighboring muscles fire up as well. But both of my biceps felt like they were going to snap. Uh, you know, in that in that grindy portion of the front squat, I was like, oh my Lord, my biceps. <laughs> like, out of all the things you could ever think of while squatting, you're not expected to think about your damn biceps, man. But that's what I did today. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, maybe one of you guys can tell me that one of the biceps has some sort of function in shoulder extension. Uh, <laughs> I just don't know. I literally don't know what happened. But that, that's, that's what happened. And uh, my legs have plenty more in them. Uh, it's the thoracic spine that I keep caving on. Uh, it's probably the, the upper back or, like I mentioned in the last few videos, most of my squatting power comes from the, the hips. Right, so my, my body wants to lean to get the hips involved, and that process puts a lot of pressure on the upper back. So it's kind of like you have to remind yourself to be patient and use your quads, use your knees more rather than your hips in a front squat. So it's kind of like fighting your own self, you know, making sure you're using the right tools at hand. So it's kind of like I feel like I can push way more weight. But I can't because then I compromise my positioning up top. Uh, so that's that's basically the, the day. Uh, after that, I did some back squats. I worked up to 200. And, and like I've said to you guys before, man, when I go from heavy front squats to back squats, I feel like I'm in a damn holiday mode. Everything is so easy in comparison to the front squat. The front squat wants to kill you the moment you unrack it. He wants to kill you. I was, I was saying to a fellow today that I saw at the gym, like putting the bar on top of my collarbone is like putting the bar on top of a bruise. My, all, my whole collarbone and anterior shoulders, they're all kind of bruised up and red and whatever because, you know, I haven't done this in a very long time and I don't know, I've lost conditioning to all this. Uh, so even the empty bar is uncomfortable, <laughs> you know. So when you go back to back squats, oh my God, it's just so easy. You don't have to worry about your upper back. You can completely let go of your upper back and still be all right. You can still be all right. It's not going to go anywhere. So whether you, you know, contract your upper back or not, it doesn't matter. 
Uh, but obviously you want to, you know, contract everything that you have, uh, make sure the buy is stable and whatever. And, and the front squats teach you that. You know, when I go back to back squats, I feel like the weight is so much easier because I'm kind of aware of everything that's involved in a, in a, in a, in a squat. I don't know. Uh, you sometimes get lazy with back squats. It's really interesting how it happens. You kind of, you know, the body's always looking for the path of least resistance, that kind of mentality, that's biology. So this is why we cheat. This is why all these things happen. But with front squats, I don't know if you can cheat that thing at all, man. I don't know where you, where you can, where can you go in the front squat? You can't go anywhere, man. You can't, you just have to be extending your spine every single second you're there. You have to send your knees way forward. You have to be aware of where your, where your, where your hips go. You need to be just fully aware. And even if you want to kind of cheat, you pay double the price up top for every every bit of cheating down low that you do. Maybe sending your 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 you know pushing power to the hips. You pay like crazy amount of debt up top because the the upper back just gets absolutely smashed. And right now, as I'm talking to you guys, I'm feeling a right wrist kind of pain, a little bit discomfort because of that rep. The bar really rolled rolled into my hands. Not that it rolled, but like you know the positioning really challenged my freaking wrists and biceps which is the craziest thing of all uh, and obviously the upper back you can see on the rep like i, I just i lose i lose uh, uh posture i lose integrity of that upper spine upper thoracic um so you know you can point your finger to thoracic extensors you can you know the upper back or you can point to the weakness of the quads maybe the quads were not up for the job um like the hips way so it's kind of like you're fighting your own tendencies as a lifter you know they, they want to send you left on a basketball court they want to send you left they want to say left but man if i go right i'm gonna kill them all but they don't want you to go right they're, they're sending you left so all the defense is kind of like you know funneling you to, to go to the left side I, you know i just watched celtics am and 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 the heat today what a game what a finish um but the whole thing i'm the whole time i'm thinking these players Everybody knows everybody, you know, the scouting report is clear. And so everyone is playing with their weaknesses, essentially. That's what the other team wants you to do. He wants you to take the jump shot. He wants you to go left. He wants you to do the things that you're not comfortable with doing. That's kind of what coaching is about and what game plans are about. Same thing with these front squats. It wants to keep you, you know, as, as vertical as possible. And that's not where my strength lies. You know, with the back squat, you can do whatever the hell you want with that. You can, you can turn the front... The, the high bar squat, you can turn into a low bar squat if you really want to. If you've got a strong enough back, no worries, deadlift that thing up. It's standing on your back. That's cool. The front squat seems to be like one of these, one of these ruthless lifts. Um, now, if you are a quad dominant lifter, it, you're probably going to have a really good time with the front squat. But if you are like a hip dominant lifter, like me, you know, my deadlift is way ahead of my squat. I feel a lot more comfortable in that bent bent position uh, that I am upright. I can't even assume that perfectly upright squat. You know, I sometimes see people, man, squat. I mean, everyone's got different proportions or whatever. There's reasons for things. But some people with their bare feet can squat perfectly upright and their toe, the, the knees don't go over th that far over their toes. It's just the way they are. Like, So I look at that person. I'm like, man, you're built for front squatting or high bar squatting, whatever the hell you want to do. But front squats won't be a challenge for you. Because the, the upper back is not going to have to work so hard to cancel out the deficiencies that your lower body has between the knees and the hips. You know, every point that you that you send over to the hips to deal with, you have to pay two points up, upstairs for your upper back to deal with all of that. That's kind of how it works, these things. Um, so I, I like that about the front squat because it's literally, a, it's, 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 like a, it's like a chess game. It's kind of like a, you know, you can't just muscle it. You know, you, you have to be patient. You have to be aware where your where your limbs are where your body is um that that you know so when i think about clock 250 pause squat man like i mean i don't know what he's feeling i mean front squats always look better than they feel because well i don't know i don't want to speak about everyone but when i see a front squat i'm like that's a beautiful thing but the guy doing it is probably in hell because it's just everything is has to contract to make that thing happen and as i said to you guys i didn't squat for like front squat for like two months i come back i did a hit you know hit a big session what did i feel everything man upper back is absolutely smoked middle back everything to do with spinal extension um absolutely smoked and i, I actually felt obliques and, and and 
the, the, the rectus abdominis. That I felt, uh, I still feel those muscles today. It's not like I haven't been squatting at all. I have been squatting, man. I've been doing back squats all this time. But that goes to show you the difference between the two. There's a difference there. There's a different loading. There's a different weight uh, that's associated with, with, you know, how you approach the bar and, and how, you, how you lift it. So I'm loving front squats at the moment. And I think I'm going to try and keep front squats as a first kind of exercise. Um, you know, uh, obviously at five o'clock in the morning, it's probably going to be a difficult thing because of mobility and whatever. But um, I'm liking, I'm really liking how it's making my deadlift feel. Uh, and also, obviously, how my, how my back squat is feeling. It just it feels like a freaking holiday. Um, so I'm still kind of pursuing that 180 on the on the on the front squat. I kind of had flirting ideas about putting 180 on the bar, but after that 175, my wrists were done. Uh, I need a little bit more power through the legs, so I can lean into my knees more rather than in the hips. That way, I can spare the upper back because you you can see that the, the you know I watched the the replay of the Watch the video of that one 175. I don't know how many times, but a lot, a lot of times. Yeah, I can just, I can just, I'm just looking at the shoulder blades. I'm looking at that spinal position of thoracic spine, and it just, just flexes, flexes, and when that happens, it's, it's, it's a freaking fight. It's an absolute fight. Um, it's kind of like a yin yang. I want to use my hips, but the upper back says, please don't use your hips because we're gonna get snapped up here. Um, so I'm, I'm doing it every day now. I'm doing front squats every single day. I want to continue doing that. Back squats every other day. Work up to a single. That's all I'm doing for that. Um, deadlifts every time I go to the gym. I don't, don't want to do deadlifts at home anymore. Like it's, I don't know. I always feel awkward kind of making a lot of racket at home. Neighbors and whatever. So I go to the gym plenty enough times. Now, like you know, three days a week, four days a week, whatever. That's plenty of deadlifting. So just leave that for the gym. Where I don't have to mind about you know making noise putting the weights on and off and all that stuff so i'll leave that for that and uh and yeah focus on front squats i'm doing hindu squats as well as i said i did yesterday hindu squats lots of those uh they're kind of keeping my knees on the map making my use my knees and i think they're kind of improving the way uh front squats are feeling now there's a debate whether sets of 30 40 50 can improve strength um, i've had a bunch of chats with you guys about that i honestly feel and I've, I've proven to myself many times that high reps do in fact make me stronger. You know, in, in the in the traditional sense, you're supposed to, you know, the whole block prioritization, going from high reps to low reps, going from lightweight to heavyweight and, and whatnot. But I think th those two qualities can coexist at the same time. Uh, that's what my feeling is. Working with singles and working with sets of 30 works well for me. I don't know how, I don't know what. Um, but my setup and my experience and my, my training history is not a normal one. Like my, my body is accustomed to daily work. Uh, my work capacity is higher than a lot of you guys listening to this because I do this every day. And maybe my body has kind of improved its tolerance to this or maybe I've improved my autoregulation. I just know when to stop. There's a whole bunch of things going on here, but um, I don't want you to th guys think that I go to absolute war every single day. Um, it's not like that. It, it really isn't. Like, for instance, today, there was no volume. It was just a whole bunch of singles. Single on the front, single on the back, single on the deadlift, and that's it. Like, how hard is that to recover from? Um, you know, I, I feel it's it's not too bad at all. Uh, but once again, it depends, man. Like, I'm used to working with 90% weight, but somebody that never does that, like, let's say somebody who's into block prioritization and they... They have a window where they do this stuff and then they, you know, deload for a very long time. They don't touch 90, 95% weight. Me, every day, man. It's almost every week that I, that I work with this. Um, so it's it's not a shock. I know a lot of people say, like, you know, it's not really a 95% weight if you can hit it twice a week. Well, I don't know, man. I, you know, all these calculators say all sorts of things, man. But once again, I feel you can train your body to tolerate heavy weight. You know... I think so, because the things that get sore on people are the joints. The joints get sore. And I've spoken about this at length, about what I think about, you know, knees and hips and elbows and wrists and all that stuff. Like joints, tendons and ligaments need circulation. They don't get circulation at rest. They're not perfused. I've said this a million times. They get their circulation through lifting every single day. That's what they want. 
But they don't want you to go hammer and tongs on them every single day. They don't want you to grind them to a dust. They don't want that. So they want high frequency, medium to low volume, and they're happy. Right? But everyone focuses on muscle. Everyone's like, oh, no, no. You got to train muscles twice a week for best. All right, bro. But what about nerves? What about ligaments? What about tendons? What do they want? Everyone focuses on the muscle. I've, I've, you know, I'm sick and, I'm not that I'm sick and tired, but I'm, I'm bored listening to my own self talk about these things. It's not just a muscle, man. And, you know, a lot of people criticize me, uh, you know, in the comments, whatever. You, you don't understand anything about programming, whatever. Whatever, man. Like, I've read the things that I've read, and I have plenty of examples in my mind of people who were very successful who had similar ideas. Okay, drugs or no drugs. Like, everyone, only only Eastern guys do drugs. The West guys never do drugs. Block periodization is made for natties. And all this stuff that I'm doing is for drugs. Let me tell you what I think about drugs. Everybody is on them. Everybody. That's my belief. Everyone that we follow, everyone that is good up there in, in, in the stratosphere, 99.9% .9 of these dudes, these influences are on drugs. So my conclusion is when I meet somebody, when I see somebody, the first thing is they're drugs. Because I've been abused, I've been lied to so many damn times by many, many different sources. And frankly, my heart's been broken because these people I looked up to when I didn't know anything. And 10 years in, I know a bit more and I'm like, you're, 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 you're a liar and I've lost all respect for you, okay? So for me, as a protection to my heart and, and, and you know, my feelings, I'm assuming everyone's on drugs and that way I know everyone's on drugs and there's no expectations. There's no, I need to do this one day. No, you do you and I do me. You do your program, I'll do my programming and everyone's happy. I know there are a few people out there, there must be who are natural and who are up there with the elites. There has to be. There's genetic freaks everywhere. But the far majority, and every single day, there seems to be some sort of new information about another guy getting popped. So for me, and maybe for your sake, just stop looking at these guys in, in, in a light of, I need to buy their program because they're, they're really good. <laughs> the chances are, if they're deadlifting four, 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 500 kilos, he's not you know clean. And you're buying his program, I don't know what the hell you're looking for, unless you're not clean as well and you're juicing it up. In that case, you know, you know, go for glory, man. Like you do you. Um, but buying programs from somebody that's on 50 billion liters of trend absolutely makes no sense to me. I don't know how you can get information from a guy like that and expect results. I mean, the program might, might be good, but what, what about the rest of the program, the kitchen, the kitchen stuff, the syringes and all that stuff? What's going on there? Anyway, whatever. As I've said to you guys in the comments last few videos, we've talked about this. There's a few things that really get under my skin. Uh, not many things get under my skin like this topic. Fake naturals. I have no problem with anybody doing steroids. I've said that many times before. If you're honest about it and open about it, I'm happy with you. Because you are not sending the wrong messages to that 16-year-old looking up at you. The 16-year-old knows from day one he, he's... he's enhanced that's it but when there's a fake natural who is an idol who is a influencer who is out there doing amazing things and claiming natty you're making me crazy in the head man because i'm like what is wrong with me what is wrong with me why am i not good as him and so then these thoughts can be very toxic for a young person this is why fake naturals really really grind my gears because they murk the water of what's possible what isn't possible and then we have self-esteem issues, the natural guys who are not getting any damn results, self-esteem issues, confidence issues, self-worth issues, all these types of things that we go freaking crazy, you know, because of these people lying, selling products through lies. That's what pisses me off. I'm 33, man. I'm over the damn hill. I'm not expecting to do anything amazing. But I remember how I felt when I was 23, 24, 25. When everyone said on, you know, when I thought... Arnold, when I was like 15 years old, I thought Arnold's natural. He's just worked hard. I'm, I wish that information was out there to say, no, Ivan. Little Ivan, you, let me tell you something, man. This is drugs. It's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of damn drugs. Anyway, guys, I can could, I could make this freaking an hour-long speech. Um, appreciate everyone on the comments, uh, on Instagram and on Patreon, guys. As always, I appreciate you guys and uh, I'll see you guys in the comments. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.